Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, it's Jane Tara from Better Reading. This is What Are You Reading? And I have a really special guest here today, Emma Young, the author of The Disorganisation of Celia Stone, which is a wonderful, wonderful, glorious, fabulous new novel that's out and oh. we're going to talk about it today. But, Emma, you know, it's great to have you here. Oh, thank and you. Um, for you to actually get to meet our wonderful community who will all start joining in in a minute. Hi, guys. Um, we've got some really exciting stuff to share with everyone today. So, Sharon, hi, Jane and Emma. Hi. Hi, Sharon. They all start popping up hey, now, Sharon. which is great. And they come in and um, tell us what they're reading, which is fantastic because quite often it's something you know that we've told them about and quite often they tell us about something I've never heard of before good evening uh good afternoon ladies Malvina says hi Malvina I love it these are regulars too which is wonderful um reading hello beautiful by uh Ann Napolitano uh yes Malvina I, I actually haven't heard of that one so there you go Kylie, hi, Jane and Emma, currently reading Home to Echidna Lane by Eva Scott. She's wonderful. We've got that book here. Um, Dex has put out, uh, put the link in the comments for um, this. Whimsical Wombat Bookstore. Hello there. First time here. It certainly is because I would remember that name. Yeah, that's great. Um, uh, so great to have you here. We love bookstores. Uh, let us know more about you, please. Maybe put a link to a website up or something. Uh, Sally says, hi, Jane and Emma. Wendy says, hi, Jane and Emma. Jill says, hello, ladies. Carolyn says, um, hello, I read Lowbridge by um, Lucy Campbell, which I thought was very a, a very good read and the Marlow Murder Club. Oh, okay. Marlow Murder Club. Oh, I don't know that one. Uh, it was first in a new series, oh, which was okay but didn't really grab me. Oh, all right. Well, I will Google it anyway. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Um, okay. So, everyone, yay. I've got Emma Young here. Now, this is Emma's book. Um, I'm sure that quite a few of you have seen this because we did a preview with it. And the preview uh, comments were, uh, reviews were great. People loved it, loved it. So, Emma, tell us about it. Tell us about the disorganisation of Celia Stone. Okay, cool. Well, uh, I guess the first thing you need to know is it's a diary. Mm. It's a year in the life of Celia Stone. She is a financial counsellor by day, but she is a writer by night. And to achieve that, she has turned productivity into an art form. She is so organised. She's a good wife, good mother, good friend, good daughter-in-law, good colleague, yeah. you name it. And it all looks easy and smooth from the outside, but only her diary sees what it takes to keep all of that together. And it is taking quite a bit. There is a bulletproof daily routine in there that will make you gasp. Uh, do you do a bulletproof diary yourself? A daily routine. Um, I have relaxed a little bit yeah, since, same. Um, mm. since, yeah, some of the events described in this book. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit of auto fiction, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah, a little bit. So uh, I have kept the bits that work for me and jettisoned the parts that don't, let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, you know, she is then asked a question by her husband, Jez, and for the first time in her life she is stuck for words and in attempting to give him an answer she realises that, yeah, this is the first time ever that just getting more organised is not going to help her. So Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. It really, um, it's on the one hand, you know, quite humorous at times and lighthearted and everything but touches on a lot of like quite complex um, sort of themes in, in the book and the diary, the way it's delivered. Um, anyone out there who is in, and I know I'm speaking for me, okay, me, I'm into self-development, I'm into everyone knows that, um, but sometimes you can kind of let the structure of things rule you a bit like you you're going for that um I don't know better version of yourself and in the meantime you're not just enjoying the moment and what you've got and you're putting you know these structures around yourself and so I felt that quite a lot with yeah. um with Celia that she was you know just holding on so tight it kind of asks the question mm. when do you try so hard for well-being that you stop 
in, ensuring your own well-being and start endangering it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So it's but the flip side of that is too there's some really great suggestions in here. There's some really great insight into, you know, into personal development. Uh, she reads some wonderful books that you mentioned and you've got um, the list in the back as well of what you've you've uh, mentioned in here. So it's actually, it's, it's like a, a self-help book and an anti-self-help book and a great novel all in one. It's fantastic. Um, Just and, stop if you start getting side effects. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone who has um, read it, let us know. Um, now, talk to me a little bit just about um, what was the inspiration? Like, what was the was there a light that went off? Was there a seed? What was it that you went? Oh, I know my next book. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was um, thirty. A few, a few years past 30 and I was starting to think about having a baby and I encountered certain health issues that had completely flown under the radar for me. And in pulling the threads of how that had happened, I started to um, uncover some things, yeah, some health issues that I had completely mm. uh, not known about but that I had caused through this relentless pursuit of health and fitness. Mm. And in doing that, you know, after I kind of, went on a bit of a healing journey myself, I started to think about what were the things in my past that turned me from, you know, a reasonably high achieving young woman, but a pretty ordinary one, you know, who stayed out late and partied and just, you know, was a bit lazy like everybody else um, into this kind of lean, mean fighting machine. And in, um, (laughs) yeah, and in pulling those threads, I suddenly thought this is like the plot of a novel like what makes us the way we are Mm. and what was it in my life that made me that way and I and I managed to kind of unravel it to an originating event and yeah and that just made me think this is a a real plot line here Mm. Mm. it's an occupational hazard I guess that well everything strikes you as a plot line (laughs) yes yeah absolutely but I think that um you know it really rings true to me I know a lot of our Um, readers know this and I just told you that I've got a novel coming out next year but it's very similar it's like it's it's women's fiction it's a novel but at the same time it is a a self-help journey um, for the reader and for the protagonist and uh, you know it is that thing of you know at some stage in your life and you fortunately did it a lot younger than me (laughs) it's like you know you start to go why am I so hard on myself Mm. And then you start to really look at that and look at why. And, you know, and the idea is to come out the other side of it and not be so hard. Um, so, Dex, can you pop up uh, Emma's first book onto the screen? So a lot of you will know this book, The Last Bookshop, and I know this was really popular as well. Give us a quick kind of, you know, blurb of what this is about and and let us know if you've actually read that as well. Uh, Yeah, so The Last Bookshop was about Kate. She is the owner of The Last Bookshop in a CBD that has become very glitzy and she is surrounded by Prada and Burberry and she's just kind of the last bastion on this very high-end street. Profits are down and, you know, rents are up and she is hit by one last financial blow that means that she really now her back against is against the wall and Mm. she has to kind of decide is she going to fight to keep this bookshop is or is she going to go the way of the tide but Mm. she has a very kind of motley crew of uh clients and customers and they are determined that this bookshop is not going to go down without a fight so they kind of sweep her up and it's about what happens (laughs) yeah I can remember it was very uh, was it 21 2021, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was very popular because um, because anything with bookshop mm-hmm. in the title does extremely well here. It's a very um, booky book. <laughs> yes, yeah. So a book for book lovers. Um, Jill says, Emma's book is on my to-be-read pile. Fantastic. Um, Kylie, thanks for a great session last night with Roger Simpson. Oh, well, you know, segue. Um Yes, so if you didn't see the event last night, we did um, Roger Simpson. This is book two in the Halifax series. Of course, it's the the TV series that did so well. He's now writing um, a book series and it's great. People are loving it. Resurrection is book two. And we did um, a 
podcast or Cheryl recorded a podcast with him and it is out now. And as Kylie mentioned, there was the event last night. If you missed it last night, you can go back and look at it on Facebook. Um, Cheryl, currently halfway through Bookbinders of um, Jericho by Pip Williams and enjoying it. Oh, oh me too. Yeah, yeah. I'm also halfway through that. <laughs> yeah, like every Australian. It's still on the bestseller list. Um, Malvina, Demon Copperhead was a five-star read for me. Fantastic. That's oh, me great. Too. That's great. Um, Julie, hi, everyone. I'm reading Victoria Perman's A Woman's Work, an interesting insight to women, women's roles in society in the 1950s. She writes great historicals and I believe she has a book coming out next month or anyway in the next two months. Um, so, Julie, if you enjoyed that, there's another one on the way. Um, Sue, I'm reading How to Mend a Broken Heart by Rachel Johns. Love that one as well. More Bookbinder of Jericho with Wendy. And um, she's also listening to Making Peace by Fiona McCallum. Both good. Oh, that's interesting. So you list, so because so many of our readers do audio as well, and I'm a big audio book listener, reader. Uh, but I do nonfiction for my audio and then I fiction but you're doing two fiction one of them's audio so okay cool let and please tell us if you do audio because we love to you know see what our readers are doing and how they're how they're embracing their next great read um hello Jane and Emma just finished The Wakes by Diane Yarwood that's from Melissa and that is uh, have you read that one no. The Wakes oh so it's so good it's definitely one of my books of the year I really enjoyed it Emma hello better reading team hello okay now I have a couple of things to um, share with you today first of all we um, have been posting about this on Facebook it's been in our newsletter and we've mentioned it before we have a crime writers panel with three great Crime Writers from Fremantle Press. They're coming out from Western Australia. That's your publisher. Mm -hmm. um, but they're coming out. It's on um, the 28th of September. Uh, the link is here. Please come along. Cheryl's, if you're in Sydney, obviously don't come down, if, you know, if it's a hassle. But if you're in Sydney, come along because it's um, a great conversation, a glass of bubbles, and Cheryl will be moderating and we'll all be there. Uh, so the next thing, Which writers? we've got uh, Dave Warner, who's based oh, yeah, here, great. Um, uh, um, Karen Herbert, who oh, she's, wonderful. she's yeah, amazing, well. and um, David Wishwell. Oh, they're all so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so really, really great crime and, and all a little different too, mm. which is yeah, fantastic. Definitely. Um, I think Karen, we did her first book only a couple of years ago, her debut. She sort of came onto the scene. Mm, and she's like, a powerhouse. You know, yeah. She's like churning out a book, yeah. career, a yeah. book a year already. Yeah, so she's fantastic. Um, so, all right, I feel like we should have a drum roll for this because um, I have a very big special announcement to make for all of you who have been contacting us and sort of asking about our merch because stock was very low. We have just completely restocked. We've completely restocked everything and we've got free shipping for the time being. Um, so just, yeah, so until September 14, we've got free shipping. Now you'll see that both of us have our <laughs> fabulous What Are You Reading tees on. Um, Emma and I are both wearing uh, a small in the um, in the sizing, and I would say I'm generally a size ten to twelve on top. So that's a, a small in the V neck. Uh, but we also have so there's V necks. We also have the um, grey, no V necks, just the crew neck with the grey, but in all sizes, and both V and crew neck with the black which is hugely popular and I kind of wear a V-neck of this right. Actually, I've been wearing a crew neck to Pilates, but um, a V-neck and, and everyone's always looking at me like, I don't know, what am I reading? I'm too, you know, but, um, yeah, so I wear them all the time, all the time, So and so does Cheryl actually. So we've um, got all of that. We've got new tote bags in as well. They're the same tote. I take my tote everywhere. It's fantastic. But last time... 
Um, we'd only done one colour um, layer. And so when it washes, it faded a little bit. Uh, this time we've doubled the colour layer so it should remain bright when you wash it. Uh, we've got the notebooks back in stock. I know a lot of you were getting that. And so many of you were asking for this so we have a new merch <laughs> product and honestly the amount of time it took to choose this it's just like we have a mug should what are you really reading mug? yeah mugs. <laughs> we should have started with mugs but the mug this mug we vetoed so many different ones because it was it didn't feel right it didn't it wasn't the right size I like really strong coffee in the morning and I don't you know a big mug kind of washes it out coffee's and I have to fill one yeah <laughs> Don't you think it's a good good size? It's a beautiful mug. It's a beautiful mug. This is it. We've got the mugs in stock. So now we're going to give a prize, okay, to one person. We're going to give a mug, a notebook, a tote bag, and a T-shirt of a requested size, um, whatever you want. Uh, and we're going to ask one question. We're just going to randomly choose someone now. So get ready, fingers on the keyboard. What was the question? Uh, what are you currently using for a bookmark? What are you currently using for a bookmark? Let the answers come in now. Um, where are we? Look at them. They're all checking their books. They're all going, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm turning pages. So I don't want to get Lots receipts. So, <laughs> so. Sue, so you're in first. Okay, Sue Kramer is in first. She's using a receipt. I use that too. Actually. There are lots of yeah. supermarket receipts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lots of those. Do you know what I'm actually using at the moment? I got a Powerball thing a few weeks ago. Um, just I was at a news agency and I bought a Powerball thing. And I've won like $24 or something. And so that is in my current book. And I keep... Yeah, look, I'll show you, actually. There. Yeah. My lotto win is my receipt in in um, my bookmark in that, and so I actually have to take it to the you news agency. You already work at Better yeah. Reading. Why do you need a Powerball? <laughs> <laughs> no, true. I've won, I've won lotto by working here. <laughs> All right, so Dex, um, if you – oh, yes, okay, Sue's getting a message now. All right, so oh, – look, a gum leaf. <laughs> A gum leaf. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. Does it smell? I bet it does. Oh, I'm going. Oh, I'm going to look into that. That's really cool. I like that a lot. Um, a lot of souvenir bookmarks. A thank you card. Oh, that's gorgeous. Paper napkin. Um, receipts. An actual bookmark. Fantastic. Money note. Money note. Yeah. Well, they're they're almost a thing of the past, aren't they? <laughs> um, and yeah, great, fantastic. More bookmarks, so good. All right, so I couldn't read this book. You're going to share a book that you um, that you're. She, oh, you couldn't she, read yeah, it. I couldn't read it. Well, my my other half's a pilot. Oh. Um. So, okay. What are you reading? Emma's going to show us what she's reading. Drowning by T. J. Newman. <laughs> You probably remember that she wrote Falling. She's the former yes. airline um, flight attendant mm. who wrote Falling, which was about what happens when your plane gets hijacked by a terrorist. I did then, read. I did read. Yeah, that, actually. and then yeah. this one, which is what happens when um, you're a flight attendant and your plane falls out of the sky into the ocean. Yeah, and sinks. Um, sinks. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there is uh, a whole lot of thriller in here. I I liked Falling. Um, it's a kind of like. I don't mean this in a disparaging way, but like junk food for me. I, oh, you know, yeah. Like you can read them in two nights and you're just like, yeah, the whole time. And it's yeah. just so much fun. It's a real page. It's turn. like watching a yeah. Hollywood blockbuster yes. of the movies that's just like a real popcorn movie. Yeah. And so I thought that Falling was very fun to read, uh, but I thought that Drowning, she really kind of steps, an up, steps it up a notch in terms of she goes beyond her own background as a flight attendant and goes right into the research of what mm. would happen and how could you rescue someone whose plane has fallen yes not only out of the sky yeah but how do you rescue has a plane sunk into the ocean in and the is ocean. now resting yeah. on the edge of an undersea yeah. cliff yeah and like how could you get people out of there and it reminded me a little bit it's not 
probably in the same literary category as uh, Andy Weir's uh, The Martian. Yeah. But if you loved The Martian, then this is like that same kind of ultra nerd, ultra research kind of mm. read, all kind of married up with this Hollywood blockbuster kind of tale of mm. family suspense. Uh, and it's just real good fun. She does have film rights written all over uh, her, it her is, books. Yeah. It's got film rights written yeah. all over it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, cool. All right, well, I'm going to um, give a shout out to a few books. This one, Susan Duncan, um, Sleepless in Stringy Bark Bay is her first novel in ages um, and it's kind of a, a, it's a well, it's sort of a crime, like a cosy crime, but it's about a group of retirees who all um, put in together and get a house on an island and, um, and then someone dies. Um, so, yeah, great, great read, that one. Um, Shelley Burr was in just recently. Ooh, I'm excited about oh, that one. Yeah, I loved so Wake. Everyone loved Wake. Mm. Ripper is her new one. And, um, yeah, so she she did Body Reading last oh, a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, but, anyway, we've recorded a podcast with her as well and uh, everyone's very excited about getting their hands on Ripper. Um, this one, Can't I Go Instead? I haven't read this yet, but the reviewer said it's one of her favourite books of the year. Uh, it's um, a, it's a, a historical about um, a noble woman in Korea, a noble woman and her um, sort of maid, I guess, and at one point they swap um, identities to yeah and anyway i uh, look everyone's talking about how beautiful this book is so i will read it and i'll let you know more um and another one bitter and sweet by amala wad and this is about a chef a woman who goes home to kind of look after her father and um ends up sort of having to step into the family restaurant casablanca and it's got beautiful recipes throughout and it's a really wonderful family warm-hearted story um so what else have you got there oh uh i just read this one um, i loved this from affirm press storylines mm. by carrie cox who's a fellow west australian author this is her third novel it's got a beautiful cover doesn't it yeah it's, it's great got cover. that really kind of nostalgic almost like an 80s movie mm. kind of a cover mm. and it is about a woman who has a car accident when she's young and she ends up horribly disfigured with dreadful facial scarring mm. and she ends up living a very retired life where she has to make up her face for you know an hour every morning with this incredibly oppressive thing that she calls the routine and you know mm. ends up basically having to you know prepare and paint her face every day and she's just never let anyone see her without this not even her family mm. members and she runs like a lifestyle retreat in the bush uh, where she helps other women who mm. are, you know, just having a, a retreat. And so what I love about this is Carrie has beautiful writing and it's this gentle blend of humour and mm. observation that is extremely readable, like it's not heavy at all. Mm. It's um, very page-turning. I read this in just a few days. Yeah. And she just as well as this humour and she's got like a, a little, you know, will-they-won't-they they romance in the background uh, this, you know, this guy who seems not to be put off by her, mm. um, by any of her guardedness, and but you know she would never let him see her. So there's that will they won't they romance. But yeah, the book is uh, the kind of like I loved it because the this retreat is a little bit like a fantasy as well. She runs this retreat for for women, and you can kind of imagine yourself mm. in this environment that she's set up where you get the gifts on the pillow and it's this beautiful, it's got a dam and it, it's got hiking. And yeah. the way she sets that up, it's like fun to read in that escapist kind of way, yeah. which doesn't really fit with that quite heavy kind of background. So it's this lovely blend of, um, you know, pace with escapism, but also this really thoughtful meditation on what is beauty and what is it for yeah. and, and do we need it and you know what women are bound by so yeah I would say yeah. Carrie Cox is one of my favorite writers She's at the moment wonderful. and I feel like you know more of you should be picking up her books um because it, you know she's still flying under the radar a little bit yeah but uh shouldn't be I think she's, she's amazing yeah she's yeah. that wonderful blend of 
like a literary fiction beauty of prose with yes. like a, a commercial fiction yep. readability. Absolutely. That I think is so rare and she's just wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let us know if any of you have read it. Actually, there's quite a few people who um, Yvonne and Kylie have read, um, just bought Ripper. Um, Helen says, I'm reading Murder Book by Mark Billingham. Uh, Marjorie, I've just borrowed Sisters of the Great War by Suzanne Feldman. I haven't heard of that one, Marjorie. I'll check it out. Um, my bookmark is a lace one from Switzerland. Cheryl, I love that. That's great. Love it. Congratulations, Sue. Look at people saying congratulations to yeah. Sue. This is one of the nice, well, probably the nicest community around and particularly on social media. It's just like everyone's just nice to each other, even if they don't agree with, you know, one person loves a book and someone else didn't really like that book. Mm. It's always, um, everyone's always polite and, you know, really supportive of each other. I love it. Um, all right, so if I got any others, um, oh, the hummingbird effect, Kate Mildenhall, who is just a cracker, love her, great, great writer, she's so good. Podcast with Cheryl is out now, um, so go and have a look at the podcast. Um, I think we've got everything for Sue, have we, with the, okay, well, I want to return to your book. So for anyone who's just joined us, Emma wrote The Disorganisation of Celia Stone. It was a very popular uh, preview with our readers. It was It's just out now. She's come over from Western Australia to meet you all and to talk about her book and, um, and go and see some bookshops, I guess. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, tell readers about it, just what it's about. Oh, so uh, Celia Stone is a financial counsellor and a writer and she has made organisation and productivity into like a seamless or apparently seamless whole and nobody in her kind of outside life who only sees this kind of outer shell of achievement knows how much it takes to keep it all together but her diary is privy to all of the kind of scaffolding and organisation and lists and routines mm. and visions and values plans and spreadsheets that, that occur in order to make her life appear as easy and as achieving as it does. So everything's cool except one day she is thrown a life curveball that is so large that for the first time ever just relying on her daily routine is not going to be the silver bullet mm. that it always has been and this is what happens when you just take a kind of giant leaf blower to those carefully ordered mm. petals and you just blast them all away. Mm. <laughs> mm. So Emma is the author of, um, Dex is going to um, put it up. So Emma's the author of The Last Bookshop. Uh, it was out a couple of years ago and a lot of you read that and loved it and I know that. Um, this is, you know what? I mean, I love many things about this book, Emma, but it's different. Oh, like, you know, quite often you read sort of, you know, the same sort of story in different packages or whatever and, and you know, great books and, you know, wonderful writers and everything, but just occasionally something comes along and it's unique. You know, it hasn't been sort of done before in another form and, I mean, you know, Bridget Jones and, you know, things like that. But, but this is, it's really unique. It really stands alone. So uh, if you lovely. haven't already, please grab hold of this book. It is wonderful. I loved it. We all loved it. Um, go and check out the review on our website and, um, and, you know, support Emma while she's writing another one. Are you writing another one at the moment? Uh, I haven't actually put pen to paper on the next one, but um, I have my plan already and it will be pen to paper in November. So Very good. All right. I really look forward to seeing what comes next because, you know, two sort of, yeah, very different books of, uh, you know, so, yeah, it's one to watch. She's one to watch, people. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it from us today. Now, remember... Go and get your free shipping for your new What Are You Reading cup and then you can think about us in the morning and, you know, when you're reading and having your morning coffee and everything. I love the size. Like, and I am a full-blown coffee snob. I really am. It's an art form and my cup has to be a certain size and this is 
Yeah. This Perfect. is not your cheap Kmart mug. Peter. No, it's this not. This is a gorgeous yeah. specimen. Yeah, yes, so. yeah, it is. So um, thanks, Emma. Thanks for coming. Thank you for and having me. we'll be seeing more of you, no doubt. And uh, everyone, we'll see you next week.